Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, I want to talk about the challenges in the Sentinel League. And since this whole challenge system got a rework uh, with like having like super easy challenges to very, very difficult challenges, um, I want to talk about those since yesterday I finished my 40 of 40. I've done all the challenges. I got my beautiful uh, big trophy um, next to my other big trophies. I've been doing this since 16 or 17 leagues. I do the 40 or 40 every single league and it's not about the transmog or at least the, the microtransactions itself it's more about i'm collecting totems and you know if, if somebody joins your hideout uh, and for a trade and he sees like this and they're like okay that dude is a gamer right so uh yeah that's what i want to talk about um how was it which challenges were good which were terrible which were like a waste of time which is like which challenges are like undoable for um a more of a casual approach to the game and just how I did certain challenges. And also, which challenges did I buy in the end? So um, since I'm playing softcore trade league, um, I do use the TFT server. I think I don't need to explain what that is. Unless you're very new to the game, then it's probably something you probably don't even care about. But anyways, TFT, I think, is a well-known Discord server where you can like offer your stuff and do services, challenges, whatever. And you can just buy other people, um, other people's time to let them make challenges for you, for example, right? Because there are certain challenges that just need a very, very tanky build or one with like very, very high DPS to just um, ignore certain mechanics. But anyways, we're gonna talk about them in a little bit. So let's start with the first one, learning the ropes. I don't know, I, to be honest, you know, at some point when you just go through the campaign uh, and start mapping, you probably have already done like six, seven, eight challenges just naturally by playing the game, right? The so purchase gem from the vendor, I think all of these kind of things, not really worth talking about. The basics of Sentinels, the same thing, you know, in Act 1, um, you pick up your first Sentinel, you, you deploy it, right? Uh, or you basically use it, you get some skill tree notes on the Sentinel uh, control, and you're pretty much done with that, right? Defeat an Actbot, which is empowered. I think I did this when I leveled up another uh, tune. I tried to do this on my high level character, and I think Kitava works. All other um, doesn't work just because if you go into a low level zone, you don't have this, this window where you can actually activate your central, uh, Sentinels with your hotkeys, right? I think Kitava works, but I'm not entirely sure, but I did this with uh, while leveling up another tune with leveling gear, you know, a Tabby and stuff like that. I think it was a Hollow Palm. Then you just empower the boss and one-shot it anyways, right? But I do have to say, empowering bosses is actually difficult. Like, they get like three, four times uh, the amount of uh, HP and depends like on how your Sentinel is rolled. But this one is kind of a no-brainer. The vendor recipes... Um, there is the only thing that was a little bit weird. I mean, sometimes you have like a strong box where you get like mirrored items and if you have two items of the same name and you vendor those, um, then you basically get an orb of chance. Unique item, there is like a lot of uh, vendor recipes. For example, if you run this, this um, what is it, sun and moon map, whatever it was, um, there is like two shield parts, you know, and then if you sell those two with a fusing orb, you would get this challenge done or um, you could do a low weave with 60 unique rings or there's many other ways of creating a unique item. Skill jam the same way. The only thing, the magic boots, I think I had to look up. So if you go just to um, vendor recipes, PUE, um, then you're basically going to find a shit ton of, of all of these like vendor recipes and then you just search for, okay, I need movement speed. Then you have magic boots with 10% movement speed. You need normal boots, a quicksilver flask, and an orb of augmentation. You sell this to the vendor, and you pretty much have this one done. No problem at all. Defeat these act bosses. I mean, this is something you have done once you level up your character. On leak start, you just kill all of these bosses, uh, and you have this one done as well. Then complete a Valside area. This is just something you do normally anyways, especially uh, on leak start. Choose an ascendancy, complete an encounter, a bestiary altar. You even get a quest for that, you know, like when you meet Einhar for the first time, he says, come to the menagerie, let's do uh, a blood altar thing and uh, we're good. And the architects are basically uh, with Alvar, so no problem either. So use Sentinels was the first one where I was saying like, okay, that's a bit weird. So you have to use all of the 26 different uh, version. And if I take a look at my chest, I'm still having like so many freaking Sentinels laying around, even though my loot filter only shows me rare Sentinels, all the others I don't care about. I don't even, I should recombine them for better uses, but I'm just not the person that is um, playing like that. I just use them, whatever, you know, if I say I have a blue one, then I put, uh, put, um, 
put this one in and if it's gone, I put it to the side and take the next one. I don't personally really care what roles are on them. I know there is insane strategies with making a lot of currency, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about different ones. And there are some bases that are rarer than others, like a Rust that you find like while the campaigning and stuff like that. But I think the Prime Evil one was the one that I was missing in all forms, in the red, yellow and blue one. And I think the last one here, the Cosmic Apex, and I think those four you get with recombinating. So you really actually have to use those um, power cores. Holy shit, I have a lot of, uh, of those already. And you just continuously uh, combine them until you hit the ones or you do it the way that I did. I think I still have some of those uh, for sale um, just because I was buying the ones that I... Yo, what is this? I was buying a bunch of those and then at some point um, I was just using it one single time so the challenge is completed. And then I resold them for like... Some of those were going for an X actually. But that was like... 90% of that was pretty easy and the last one remaining is either you start recombining them but it's only a very rare chance to get like um, other ones. I think you have to use this um, amplifying power core and then you transmute them or something or you put together. But in the end of the day, I bought the, the last four that I was missing and that was that challenge done. Egg bosses 2, pretty much the second part of the campaign. Magic or rare monsters, that is actually... You know, these are just arch nemesis monsters. And if you have, for example, the way I played with the Valley of Darkness, the rare monsters do have one additional modifier. And um, that challenge was super fast done. I was never focusing on that one. I was just mapping and at some point you just have it done because you defeated all of them. You, I even have like 20 of 18 just because I found all of them, basically. So then we come. So this is actually the super easy stuff, I would say. Now we uh, come to the part where it says about uh, the leak specific things and there were some issues in my opinion. So I started off with doing all of those challenges in the area of Crimson Temple because I was farming uh, like my challenges but I could also have the chance of getting the Magebot cards and I still have like hundreds of Crimson Temples laying around um, just from um, randomly mapping for farming the altars and stuff. But almost every single um, challenge that you want to do is in your Atlas passive tree, right? And so you better have to make or you, you should make use out of that because some challenges are only possible thanks to the Atlas tree. And here, complete 100 breaches, you know, I just um, scaled all the breach nodes and I had like this fast breach and more monster density and stuff like that. It was absolutely no problem. The Xestula uh, open hand is also here on the bottom side, I think it's over here. Call of Xestula breaches new maps, have 2% chance to contain this guy. Um, it is not hard at all. And if you only use for, um, if you only search for certain bosses, for example, the Fichelo who dreamed outside of its domain, if it's dreamed inside, it's the boss in a breach stone. And if it's outside, it's the boss when it spawns in a breach. And this one was the last one and I was seeking for him. But in the end of the day, I, I did buy a charged compass with, um, you know, there's a Saxon modifier where it says like um, it will contain a Chayula breach and so on. And then with like um, scarabs and stuff like that, you have like five, six breaches and all are Chayula. And then it's like super easy with the notes on the tree to actually find the boss and kill them. And the flawless breach also needs quite a good build because they open so fast and you have to kill a lot of monsters in a short amount of time. Um, but still possible. The only problem is like the flawless breach stone. It depends which one you buy, um, but Flawless doesn't change anything, you know. Um, for example, you usually have like um, Soft Tool and Ash, then Ulnital and Chayula. And the first three are giving the same experience. Ulnital is a little bit more and the last one, Chayula, has the highest experience because it's the highest area level. It counts for the normal, the Enriched Breach Stones, the Charged Breach Stone, up to the Pure Stone. But on Flawless, it doesn't matter because every Flawless Breach Stone, no matter if it's uh, Xoff or Ulnital or uh, Chayula, in the end of the day, they're all area level four, uh, 84. They all have the same drop pool when it comes to like, can it drop an amulet, for example? Um, so it doesn't really matter which one you do, but you need a good build for it. So Possessed Rogue Exile, that was weird. You have to defeat all 34 Possessed Rogues. And I was like... How do I do that? Do I need to run like the the Scarab with like the Torment and Spirits and stuff like that? But no. First of all, you take Rukus, which says your map have 8% chance to contain 20 additional Rogue Exiles. I don't know how many there are, probably over 50, but you just run a couple maps with this. And then there is the other note, Exiled Will. Rogue Exile in your maps are possessed by Torment Spirit. So you just skill all of those five points and then you just run a couple maps. And then this is like, I think I was done in like five or six maps and I found all of them because you have 20 rogues and all of them are possessed and you need 34 so 
that was actually one of the challenges where I thought it's going to be ridiculously hard. But in the end of the day, those five points, a couple maps, and you're good to go. Um, essences, um, I was just like scaling into all the essence modifiers. I'm not going to like continuously explain it. You know, when it comes about the, um, the Atlas passive tree, you want to do essence challenges. You type in essence and you just fill out all the essences. You know, there is there is modifiers where monster, uh, the essence monsters have one additional or a higher tier. And, you know, crack open monolith is like super easy. Essence with at least four rare modifiers is easy to do with the value of darkness because the rare modifiers do have one additional modifier. Um, defeat an essence monster with elite eight. That means that there are, with the notes, um, you can find like seven essence monsters. And then you would use a remnant of corruption. Um, to get an 8 modifier, so I had this a couple of times, nothing too heavy. Defeat an essence monster that has at least two of the following essences, Hysteria, Horror, Delirium, or Insanity. Those are basically the special ones. I think I personally, even though I was corrupting them very often, <laughs> 69, um, I never really got the one with uh, two additional ones, but a friend of mine had this one in, in his map when he was farming challenges, and he invited me, and uh, that was gone, right? So it wasn't like too bad either, because sooner or later I would have gotten that. Then combine sentinels um, using a power core that can be naturally obtained. This is like basically using those kind of currencies, you know, combining, transforming, amplifying, and augmenting. You just throw a couple together and you have those challenges done as well, as well as assemble a unique sentinel as a set with like one of these. You get you have the chance to, uh, to get a sentinel that is not one that can actually naturally drop, right? So no problem. Domination was actually super easy. Map boss, breach boss, essence monster, metamorph, delirium boss, and shape or elder guardian. While affected by the co covetous shrine or covetous shrine, and there is basically as well a note on the atlas tree on the top side here. I think shrines in your maps a ten percent chance to be in this basically shrine. I think it's like a quantity rarity buff for magic finders, but you take more damage. But in the end of the day, you just clear the map, see if you find one of these shrines. And if you do, then, you know, you click on it, instantly run to the boss and kill it, no matter if it's an Elder Guardian or a Delirium boss. I think Delirium boss was a little bit harder, but I just, um, you know, you just take a map, throw some Delirium orbs on it. I think once you reach 60% Delirious, you're going to have both bosses either way, but you can do it with like 20% or even like 20%, just one single orb um, on an easy map. Then you first check if there is a shrine and then you just start killing monsters without the shrine. Wait until the boss spawns, maybe get him low, click the shrine, but the shrine like lasts a minute or so. So you just click the shrine, you kill the boss, and that was actually super easy to do. Breach boss in the wild can always can also be like uh, manipulated with like compasses that spawn uh, certain breaches. Then metamorph, defeat a metamorph which is comprised of five unique body parts. Um, this is basically Intane's laboratory, you know, once you do like a bunch of metamorphs, you have like shit tons of these like metamorph brains and whatnot, and they are all like unique, so you just go into Tane's laboratory, assemble one five unique one, and you have this one done, uh, which has five different rare modifiers, this is basically also when you do your Atlas uh, passive tree and just take all the metamorph nodes, they, um, you can even do like twice, um, two metamorphs at once, and it's like super easy to do. Um, so defeat a metamorph in Tain's laboratory and the first one is like in one go. This was the one I was I uh, was struggling a little bit a little bit with defeat a metamorph and a rogue metamorph within five seconds of each other. The way you do that, there is also a passive tree here um, that says that your maps have a chance to contain a rogue metamorph or something. Um, and I was always wondering how do you see that? And basically in your mini map, once you run around, you see the metamorph icon on the boss, you know, when you assemble a metamorph, they, they have like a different uh, icon than the ones that have just body parts of it, right? And if you're just randomly mapping, then you see this boss icon, and then you know, oh, this is the rogue sentinel. So what you do, you just run away from him, you let him there, um, finish the map, spawn a, um, a metamorph, maybe get him down to like 20%, then run away, take the rogue exile to like 20%, then just lure them together and just blow them up, and that's pretty much it. But this was a challenge that was a little bit more complex and harder to do. When it comes to harvest challenges, that was weird. I actually bought two challenges. So the way I played, obviously taking all the harvest nodes in the atlas tree, mapping a lot, and since I'm doing, uh, since I was, or I'm still doing a lot of crafting, I always need like reforges and like augment speed or whatever you find. You know, it sells quite uh, high on the TFT server if you find certain crafts. But I was always having a good use for harvest craft, so I did this one um, just next to it, right? But so that means to sacrifice a stack of divination cards. I think I did this with the the chaos that the eight cards or ten cards that give you um, one chaos orb, and I actually got it in the first try, which is pretty lucky. 
Um, the harder to grow if you can just buy the token or the fragment or the invitation. No, it's not an invitation, but it's like a boss fragment. No problem. But defeat a harvest boss and the seven crops in a single sacred growth, I had to buy those. Because after three or four days of just randomly mapping and doing the harvest challenges, I never had the seven crops and I did have all the harvest um, nodes on a tree, right? So, and I never found a T4 seed that is a harvest boss, you know? Um, and then I went to TFT, I think I bought like uh, this one for 30 chaos and this one for 50 chaos and then it was done. But I was like grinding like three, four days, just mapping, 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 opening every single harvest and I could never find a T4 boss. Of course, you can say, yo, that's just unlucky, you know, but in the end of the day, I don't want to be forced to just completely rely on RNG to find one of these seven crops because like six crops is already like... Um, thanks to the Atlas passive tree possible, right? And for seven, you need to just be super extra lucky. I think you need three fields that do not deplete. You know, you have like uh, a field of like four um, uh, harvest seed fields, basically. And there is an Atlas node. If you use one, normally the other one gets like uh, depleted, right? But there is a chance that the other one stays alive, even though you picked one. And you have to do this like two or three times in a row and the chance is not very high at all, right? So. This was one of the challenges where I said, like, bro, this is just stupid. This is, this is absolutely stupid. It's just mind mindlessly doing harvest and just hope to get lucky. So these two I bought and I would wish that those two should not be in there just because if there is no way to force something and it's just purely based around RNG, it just sucks. Delirium Encounter, um, that was the same thing. I think Wave 30 Simulacrum I did myself, 100% uh, Delhi T60 map, which has at least four modifiers, I did myself as well. You know, you, you can just make it super simple and just t run a four modded T60 map, even though it's a waste of currency because the Delirium Orbs do cost something. Um, it's still easy doable, just pick any mods that are super easy. Um, then defeat the map boss while Delirious, this is like super easy as well. Um, but this one, obtain at least 200 Simulacrum Splinters from a single Delirium Mirror. This is something that I wish would not be in there. There are certain strategies where you can get that amount of Simulacrum Splinters. I did buy this challenge because I said I do not want to completely make a map with like all scarabs and everything. And I tried it once. I said like, okay, what is the best map? It's either Strand map or I think Promenade is pretty good. And I was doing an okay juiced map. So with four scarabs and with Alva and everything like that. And at the end, when I killed the boss, I had um, 100 splinters or 110 splinters. There was like, okay, even if I kill more monsters, uh, getting an extra 90 splinters is quite hard. I don't know if I missed something that maybe there is a Saxon modifier that drops you twice amount of splinters or something. That would be okay to do. But I I don't know if that exists. I just tried it norm the normal way. And when I ended up having like 100 splinters, I said like, there is no way I'm going to get another 100 without really trying to make an in-depth strategy and then farm a couple of those maps to get this role going. But in the other hand, when I, bu uh, when I bought the challenge, this guy was having uh, 399 stacks on the floor plus some extra. So he was, he was getting over 300 uh, of these nodes and you probably need a headhunter and like super juice to really um, kill all the mobs in a, in a fast manner so you don't run out of delirium. And I think um, this is like a very, very specific build to do these kind of things. And that's why I think this is not good. You know, I can do 100% daily with almost every single build that I want to. With 30 simulacrums, there's also a lot of builds that could do that. Um, but the 200 needs a, a certain strategy. And I don't think this is actually good to have in the uh, um, within there because I think it's too specific. Then user recombinators, that was pretty easy. Just like, you know, the ones that you find uh, randomly across uh, mapping or whatever. These ones here, armor recombinator, weapon and jewelry recombinator. Um, and you just fulfill whatever is needed. You know, you just buy the, the cheapest fracture modifier uh, and the cheapest split base. And, you know, you get these, these things quite easy if you play it on Trade League. So um, use the Eldritch Altars. I think that was quite easy, I have to say. With Wrath of the Cosmos allocated, I'm not sure which one was this. Um, Wrath of the Cosmos. Wrath of the Cosmos. 
Oh, so these are these ones actually, the, the Keystones over here and the Eldritch Gaze, which basically means that it's more downside and it's gonna be harder. But when you do the Atlas Grinds and you actually just farm all the Altars, you're gonna get those naturally. You don't even have to focus about that, right? Because if you run um, all the Searing Exarch Altars, you're gonna have Eldritch Gaze. And if you do the other side, like the of Worlds, and if you do Searing Exarch, you take Wrath of the Cosmos anyways, just for the additional monsters in like the Crimson Temple map, more monsters, more chances to get um, the big value items and stuff. So I did never focus on this one and all, uh, got all of them basically passively. So, sheer arrogance. Complete each of the following invitations while they have at least five modifiers and are affected by Hate of Hubris. This was actually harder than I expected. The reason for that is Hate of Hubris doubles basically the modifiers of invitations and if i for example take any invitation um like even like the bosses for example these ones over here here it says unique boss deals 25 percent increased damage but obviously with hate of hubert is 50 percent increased damage and there is a lot of things that can fuck up your invitation and you need to have five modifiers so you really need to be very picky based on your build um to run map modifiers that you can actually run and keep in mind that it gets doubled so if it says monster do have 70 percent chance to avoid elemental ailments it's 140 afterwards you cannot ignite shock chill whatever to this boss and it's not only a reduced chance chance it cannot right so there are a couple of mods that you that just destroys your build um just because of hate of hubris and getting over 100 percent of these modifiers but five modifiers also means you need to chaos spam that shit and then just try to get some decent ones but this was actually harder than i thought and you need a very high DPS build. Because I was trying to do like the breach ones early on in the league. Because I said like, yo, breach bosses are easy, right? But if you have low DPS, these invitations get really, really hard. Especially with Hate of Hubris and everything. Like if you play a build like that, uh, a cast on death discharge. And you just one shot every single boss. You know, it's... Pfft. This challenge is like non-existent, but it, it's just based on your build. But it was still tricky, but doable. This was one of the challenges that I liked. Just based on the difficulty level. Um, Cosmic Wound Shaper, this is just defeat the Uber Shaper. I think all of the Uber bosses were okay to do, um, just based on like how much experience you have. Um, I personally think that Uber Maven was quite easy, Uber Elder, Uber Shaper, all was easy. I think Searing X Arc is the first one where I say, bro, this one is actually, oh wait, here is it. Um, this one is actually really hard because there is no way that I'm ever going to survive the Meteor phase, you know, and not with a build like that. I'm just saying about the normal build. Like, this Meteor phase is brutally hard. And, you know, with all the extra additional stuff that you need to do, Searing Exarch, in my opinion, is unnecessarily hard with the a, with a, with a mid phases, you know, and all the other bosses were kind of a joke. Uh, and yeah, that's about that. Powering Sentinels, power up uh, all three Sentinel slots. I mean, you just like open your um, thingy over here and you just connect it to all three um, parts over here and challenge done. Reach 30 power units. This is something. Um, I think power units could have gotten more experience. I think I got the, the 30 max in like day five of the league, maybe day six. So it was quite fast. If I compare this one to like... Um, what is it, Scourge League, where the Blood Crucible level went up to like 63 and it took me like 500 maps from like 59 to 63. That was like brutal experience that you need, while this one was a bit too fast. So I think like, it's no problem if it takes like a week or two weeks mapping to get this passively done. Um, but I think like League Day 3 or 4 and you have it done already was kind of a bit awkward. But it's still fine, you know, there is a lot of casual players. And for people like me, it doesn't really matter if it takes 2 weeks, 3 weeks. But for casual, more casual people, it's definitely a difference. So, complete each of the following unique maps. I mean, we don't really have to talk about that. It's like super easy. You probably find like 90% of those yourself. And then there's maybe, maybe like 1 or 2 maps uh, that you have to buy on top of that. Perfect Storm. Uber Cyrus, Uber Elder, or Uber Uber Elder, Uber Maven, Uber whatever, all actually quite simple, just the Searing Exarch, as I said, was quite hard. Defeat each of the following encounters while they are empowered by a Sentinel. This is actually quite easy. Um, they have 50 empowerment in an area of level 80 or higher. I think that means like T14 plus maps pretty much. And then you basically just use like the yellow sentinels and you just hover them. You know, here it says empowerment 42, empowerment 44. So here is one with 52 and you just run to the boss, you activate it and then you kill it. The bosses get quite hard, but usually still doable for every kind of build. And I'm pretty sure that there is probably some uh, notes uh, over here that give extra empowerment. So that wasn't really a hard 
thing at all. Same with the Metamorph, the Breach boss and so on. Like some of these bosses can actually get quite tense, I would say. But there is a way worse uh, challenge in this. Third of Knowledge, um, Searing X Arc, this was the Eater of Worlds, Atlas Grind. So this was is the one that I think is, is just stupid grinding and this is like not good for the game. And the reason for that is the amount. So I would say based since I was doing those challenges um, in the last like three or four days, like focusing on it. I mean, I always run my maps either with like the Altar, like either of these one sites. I don't really do Maven at all, right? But um, I would say even with the notes on the tree, um, you get like maybe two to four Altars per map, I would say is my average experience, right? So let's take a, a flat of three. So the middle part, right? Um, so you need to run 333 maps with Exarch, 333 maps with Eater, and 200 with Maven. Maven is actually easy because once I opened this Atlas Grinds, I already had like 150 of 200 completed. Why is that? Because on leak start, when you start doing your maps, once you reach like yellow tier maps, Maven appears and she says like, um, go progress further and you just grind all the atlas because in the start you don't even have the exarch and the other ones so you do this maven one naturally and then you just run an extra like 50 maps it's not a problem but running like 700 maps with altars you know it's leak day 38 today and i think i was done with all the challenges like 30 days or something right uh, like that while playing seven days a week and i think for atlas grinds if you have to run a thousand maps for me as a streamer that plays seven days a week, it's okay, but it took me a month basically. But for a casual player, a thousand maps is a shit ton of maps, you know? And I mean, if you're a pure mapper, then it's totally fine. I mean, there is people that run like five, six thousand maps per, per league, but they are like super active. But if you're like more of a bossing kind of guy or you like to do delving or harvest crafting or whatever, you know, good luck doing this because I don't think there is a way to speed this one up, right? And I think if, if that would have been 500 and 500 or all three, 250 or something, that would have been fine. I would say like 500, 500, 250 would be fine to do. Takes a time, about a thousand times two was actually uh, just stupid. I mean, it was just stupid. I don't think that challenges like this should be in the game. Obviously, like, yes, there should be challenges that are grindy, but this was just, yeah. Not really accessible for a lot of people to be honest i mean we are still like two months um to go in the league right and i ran over a thousand maps just by the first month of the league while playing a lot so casual people need to really like start grinding maps to get this one defeat the shaper while fulfilling each of the following so the conditional stuff and this is like a lot of these um challenges here are conditional stuff and some of them are okay to do and some of them are just stupid so um, Shaper, while Maven is witnessing the encounter, that's totally fine to do. Um, it's harder, but it's still doable. Without being affected by the Shaper's beam is fine. Without detonating any volatile anomalies, that just means you need a build that has shit tons of DPS. And while both of you and the Shaper are chilled, that needs actually a self-chill setup. So I would say witnessing Shaper's beam, anomalies is fine but the self chill that just needs a complete different way and if you have no idea how to self chill yourself i mean there is ways to figure it out you know but then you need to chill yourself and shaper that means you need a cult based build that can apply chill i don't know if uh, skitter bots would work because it says yeah well actually skitter bots works actually because while both the shaper it, it doesn't say that you have to chill the shaper right but i'm just saying this challenge is just very specific for certain kind of builds and I don't like this one. The other ones are doable with every single build. Um, defeat uh, completely encounters. 8 modded Blight Ravaged map was hard. But, you know, this is like an 8 modded. That means it's a corrupted Blight Ravaged map. And it was hard, but you still can like anoint your rings and there are certain builds. I mean, there's a lot of variety of builds that can do an 8 modded Blight Ravaged map if the investment is good enough. But there are also like builds that make that have like a super easy time in Blight Ravaged map, right? But still doable. Um, Expedition Unique Boss. This is actually quite simple. If you have some logbooks, I don't even, I haven't done any expedition forever. So Heist Locker, Expedition Locker. So there are logbooks that have the boss on it. So you can just buy that and just kill the boss. Shouldn't be a big deal. Defeat at least 10 unique boss in the domain of Timeless Conflict. That is quite easy for Unrelenting Stones. So these are the Uber Legion Stones. 
And overall, I did this with my Essence Drain character. I had like 4 million DPS. It was not really hard at all. But I was I had to buy all of these. Um, you just take like the cheapest ones and you just do a run, kill the 10 bosses and go out or just finish it and loot. No problem. Defeat all the Crystal King took a little bit longer because the first owl that I found was I think in depth 300. I know there is owl can spawn like way before like uh, 150, 180 or something like that. Um, but you still need the RNG to actually find one of those. Lol, 420. I probably should kill this guy just for the amulet or something. You know? But that could uh, technically, if you hate Delve and if you really just open your Delve and you have been on level 1, then it still takes a while. Probably better to go off to TFT and buy an Owl Taxi. Means people are going to guide you to Owl and then just leave the group. And you just can, can just kill Owl and loot it basically. So it's your Owl in, in the end, right? You just pay... Or somebody else's owl no you still have to kill it yourself black star conditionally well at least 80 quantity that's like super easy with the hate of hubris because um everything gets doubled so if your map has a 50 percent quantity then it has 100 um afterwards no problem at all without six or more stacks of crushing darkness um six or more stacks of crushing darkness or annihilating light wait a second black star that was the small red invitation, right, with like the bl uh, blue and red thing, that was actually quite easy. In one go, you just do all. The, you just stay in the red side, and if he the, uh, does the the red fire beam, you're probably gonna die. But you just stay there, and it needs some time. You're not just gonna kill the boss. You need to wait like at least like probably a minute in the red side, and you just follow in the red circle and never touch the blue one. This one is done. Then you do the exact opposite. You, you just buy another one, go into the blue center, and you're fine. And uh, Crushing Darkness um, is basically the blue side and the red side, so you just alternate. You go a bit in the left side, you go a bit in the right side, left side, right side, as long as you don't get higher than 6. I think that was actually pretty okay to do, um, and there wasn't uh, really a problem. So then the Infinite Hunger was the small blue one. Um, everything here was super easy, but... Gaining 21 or more stacks of corrosive, uh, corrosive hunger. So basically, if you go into the swamp and you find yourself in this, like where you have to like follow the river to get back to the bossing platform, you're going to get a stack of corrosive hunger like every one second or something. The way I did that was actually having no fire resistance, putting up a righteous fire and just getting melee by uh, the monsters that spawn there. And it took me a couple of sets to actually figure out what is the fastest way to die to not get many stacks of it. Because I also tried to just instantly log out in this phase. But for some reason that did not work. I, I waited for like multiple different swarms and every time I went down I just logged out, log in again and spawn in the boss area again, right? But it just didn't work this way. So my best uh, bet or the way I did it was like with the Righteous Fire setup. Like instantly as soon as I go in there, I go into the poison swamp, I have no chaos resistance and I pull on righteous fire without fire resistance and I, would, I will die within like one or two seconds. So I got like five stacks of corrosive hunger. So in the end, I had like 16 or 17 stacks. And But as I said, it was doable, but this is also a challenge where I think this is just kind of stupid because I don't know how much movement speed you would need to have to make it in a legitimate way where you actually run to the boss platform because... I think my way of dying insanely quickly was better than actually running to the boss platform and still me dying within like one or two seconds after spawning there. Um, I still failed like a couple of times, so that was actually quite weird. So Searing X arc with the quantity just makes it harder but doable. Without being Cauterized Flash, I don't even know what this one actually is. Um, by Annihilation is like some spells that he do, but it, it's all okay but that. Like, after completing a rolling meteors phase without being hit by any rolling meteors from a set of meteors cast while Searing Exile is below 20% health and without using any travel skills. Um, I don't know. I've killed this Uber Searing Exile now maybe 30, 40, 50 times and not a single one did I manage to survive the ball phase without using a travel skill while he is below 20%. So the way I did that is you take or buy a carry with a custom discharge build or custom death discharge. You know, you go in, you one shot the boss and this one is done because, you know, you basically did the rolling magma phase. It just never happened. But, you know, if, if, if a challenge relies on something like that, um, just a pure skill, let's say you it would not trigger once it's like um, 
one shot at the boss, right? This is just a stupid challenge. Because try it. You need to be a god gamer to dodge all of that fucking meteors. And you need to um, have a good RNG on Maven. But there is other ways, okay? This is something people told me and I think this works. You could buy gems like an ice wall. You could buy totems and other things. So once the, the meteors spawn into your... Uh, let's say they come from the waypoint to me. I'm, I, I would just basically spawn a couple of ice walls. And the, and the meteors would crush into the ice wall and disappear, right? But I tried this like one or twice. But then there is so many balls coming from all sides. And I, I just couldn't have like here an ice wall, there an ice wall, here an ice wall. Uh, but I think there are ways of like totems and other things that you could probably just stand still. Maybe even cover yourself in an ice wall. Um, to just have the meteors just not killing you or overrolling you, right? This might be a way of doing this challenge. But I think overall this is just a bad challenge. And the other ones were okay to do. So then we go to the Eater of Worlds. That was okay. Drown 10 times. This is like the, the black balls. You just move in there, move out, move in, move out, move in, move out. There's like so many balls and you just do this 10 times. You don't die and you have like 10 times drowned. So that's super easy without being affected by more than 10 stacks of uh, inescapable doom. I think this is in the... Um, in this phase where you have to activate those circles, right? And the way you do it, you know, either you one-shot the boss or kill him before the phase, but once the phase starts, I think you can just log out, log back in, and just wait until the phase is over, and you just continuously do that, um, and you'll be fine, because you need quite a fast build to reach all of the, um, or to end the phase with soaking all the pallets without uh, getting more than 10 stacks. So that's a bit weird. I think that could be 20 stacks, so... Not only the super hyper fastest builds and, and based on RNG, where does these puddles spawn, um, do have an impact on how easy is this challenge. And increased AoE, that was quite fun because when he's doing like his Omega Blast, you know, you, he's not even on your screen, but he will still one shot you. You really have to like run to the edge of the circle. And if the 70% increased AoE is there and you have the hate of hubris that also means that it's 140 percent increased aoe and that is like he just one shots the entire region and it's good luck doing something like that on hardcore but in trade league definitely doable but just maybe die once or twice good then we come to the empowered map bosses this is hard holy shit so empowered this is our these are the unique sentinels that empower a specific map boss you know like park map and so on and holy shit, I've tried two of them and it took me a couple of sentinels. I'm not lying. Like these bosses get so ridiculously strong with like 10 times the HP and, and massive amounts of regen and damage and stuff like that. Like, oh boy, I made two myself and I bought three from a carry that had like some, I don't know what build he played. But this is also like one of these challenges where I said like, I think challenges are very bad designed if they, if they force you to play a build to um to do a challenge you know i don't want to like sell all my gear and, and and just level up a new character and make a specific belt a build just to do one single challenge to then sell everything again i think these are the challenges that are just stupid other than like doing a 60 percent uh simulacrum um or 100 delirious um 100 delirious t16 map this is something i can do with many many different builds right and maybe just yeah buy a headhunter and you should be good to go either way Defeat Maven, um, Cascade of Pain is just easy dodgeable if you run circles around her, totally fine. Memory Game five times is also annoying but doable. Well, um, while affected by Maven's punishment, um, I'm not sure what the Maven's punishment was. Maybe it was the lines in last phase and you just, before you kill, you just run through and uh, kill her afterwards. And Gravity Well... I actually don't know which two those two were, but it's like certain abilities that she does and uh, you just get hit by it and you get a debuff and you should be fine after killing her. But this is totally fine still. And then the endgame grinds, the last one. I really like that there is always multiple things to do and you only need four out of six basically. Could be maybe like four out of seven to make it a little bit more wider spread. But I think um, level 100 is something I do every single league. Um, use Divine Font, this is like... If you really want to do it a chill way, you just wait, you know, there is like um, websites that show you the today's lap layout and you just wait for a day that is like super low amount of rooms and um, no golden keys and stuff like that. And you just do this in like an hour or two and you just have a super speedy build, maybe a raider onslaught, whatever. This is a, like, the thing is, 
Yes, a raider would be probably the fastest with perma onslaught, perma facing and stuff, but you can still do it with any build. Just do the divine font, it's like um, using this thing, um, the enchant thing on the end. It still takes some time, but you can just wait uh, until there's like a very fast map layout and you can just blast 100 um, or more labyrinths. Or modded rare monster in tier 16 map that is easily doable with the uh, keystone over here where monsters have one additional rare monsters. This is something you do passively. Um, Uber bosses, I mean, if you like to do Uber bosses, I'm on 58 without focusing on Uber bosses. Now I have a custom death discharge build, so I'm gonna do this challenge within like 10 minutes, I guess, because the way in this with this build I can do like. One uber boss every 30 seconds, I can say. With like, going in, setting up, kill it, one-shotting it, looting, popping in the next one. I, I can easily see myself doing over 100 bosses in half an hour, maybe like 45 minutes. So that's super easy. Um, then defeat tier 16 map bosses empowered by 15, uh, 15 empowerment. This is like the same way. Use the, the yellow one and check that the empowered... Um, the empowerment is above 50. The problem is, once you have like a very strong build, you just... You deploy your sentinel and then you attack the boss and he will die um, before he's actually empowered. So the problem is the thing that you need to figure out is just like go in because I was playing Winter Orb, you know, I was joining the boss area and, and he was like instantly dying, you know, so I had to wait all the time until I had no Winter Orb charges left. Go in, deploy the sentinel, wait until he's empowered and then start killing the boss. It was annoying, but the 200 map bosses are doable within 200 maps. And if you do like Atlas grinds here anyways, and you farm like thousands of maps or hundreds of maps basically to do that, you can passively do this as well if you just think about doing that. And then Delph 600 is something I really enjoy just because I really like Delphing. I still really like Delphing and I made my 600 and I did a couple of hours alongside the way. But I would say this is probably the challenge to take the longest depending on how do you approach level 100. But, you know, doing um, Delph 600 takes quite a while and you always have to like fill up your soul fight. You need to take care of your uh, the other stuff the, with the darkness resistance and whatnot. So it takes a while. But it's not very expensive just because a gilded um, fossils here with um, Nico scarabs and the um, Atlas passive trees were again soul fight uh, passively and like as red on top and stuff like that. I think it took me like three or four days of just like mapping and doing um, soul at least delve as soon as I was having my cap full and just continuously do it until 600. But I have to say above once you start to get like 450 500 then you really need a, a, a very tanky build that also has quite some damage i did this with my essence drainer and you should be fine but on dell 500 plus you actually need a quite good build to survive these things but if you like delve you're gonna do this anyways if not then i would say uber bosses is the fastest same as the four uh, rare modded monsters then probably wait for a day for the endgame labyrinth and um, then probably defeat 16 uh, the T16 map bosses with at least 50 empowerment. A bit annoying to do, but super easy. Level 100, Flawless Bridgestones is the fastest way, followed by five ways. You can do this in like a day or two. Um, and then probably what's left, Divine Font, uh, or at least like the Delve 600 is by far the one that probably takes the longest, but I enjoy Delve, so I did that uh, regardless, so it was fine for me. Good, that is basically my review on how I did my challenges. Holy shit, that's a long video, like 40 minutes, goddamn. But hey, um, I'm gonna, I wanna take my time talking about that because it is also kind of feedback for GGG, which challenges are good, which are bad. And definitely get rid of the challenges that have like build specific challenges that only a certain amount of builds can successfully do or actually only able to do. Also get rid of like challenges that need to have like a very very specific way of doing things with like extra scarabs and extra juicing and then having an insanely fast and like headhunter build with a 200 splinters and stuff there is other challenges that every build can do and these are the challenges that i think are good so it doesn't matter if i play a speed map right it doesn't matter if i play a bosser i'm still able to do those challenges and not those challenges where you say like i need x amount of build otherwise this is going to be impossible as well as I think that some of the Atlas grinds are just stupid. Just the amount of maps that you have to run because we have to accept the fact that not everybody is enjoying mapping. You know, there's a lot of crafters, there's a lot of like delvers, there is uh, people that run like heisting a lot, you know, like so many things with end game bosses, you know, like I think forcing people into um, mapping is a bad thing because there are people that just don't enjoy mapping that much and then doing something like... Um, 
a thousand altars on both sides and maven there's like over a thousand maps in total this is just something that is not really good you know i can see myself doing like 100 uber bosses because of the variety but it would be the same what if you would do 500 uber bosses you know like oh boy that's like a shit ton of currency a shit ton of mapping to farm them yourself um, and on top of that, if you are not like really a bosser, you're gonna need forever and you're probably gonna skip that. So I would say like challenges that are accessible for a wider right, um, range of builds is pretty fine. But I still like the journey and I still like the way the challenges turned out, like being a lot more difficult or like thinking twice on how you approach things. But as long as they were not like built based, uh, then it was still totally fine to do. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and next video.